In this video, we are going to talk about database table source. That means one database table at a time is being used as a source inside the data flow. To use a database table as a source, you go to the toolbox and under sources, you'll find the database table source, drag and drop onto the designer. And then you go to the properties of it. In the very first page, it'll ask for the source connection. And this is where you specify where your database is and uh, depending on your data provider that you can pick from the top combo box that is SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Sybase and so on and so forth. It will ask you different questions about your credentials. In this case it is SQL Server. In that case it is asking you about the user ID, password, server name, database and, and so on and so forth. In recently used connections at the top you can see the connections that have been used recently and I already have one connection that I used recently that is SQL Server connection. I'm going to use that connection and uh, test the connection. It tests successfully. I go to the next page and that's where I specify where my source is and which table I want to read. I can pick the table. In this case, let's go ahead and pick the table that contains some customer's data. That is dbo.customers1 and the next thing that you can specify is table partitioning options these options are applicable for reading from the table and they speed up quite a bit the reading part so if you partition the table into say four parts then there are four readers working at the same time so you can specify how many of the uh, partitions that you want and then you have to specify what is the key using which it is going to do the partition by default it has pre-populated the primary key that is customer ID here or if you want to specify you can specify other uh, keys separated by the comma here. For the read strategy by default full load is selected however if you want you can use incremental load based on audit fields and the way it works is you have to pick an audit field and based on which uh, in the subsequent runs it will match if the data has changed or not and based on that it will process only the changed data and load only the changed data. So if you click on this immediately you can see here at the bottom it is asking me about the audit field based on which field I want to perform the comparison and next time I want to load uh, based on that field. Say for example I had uh, the customer entry date as my field and uh, that is the audit field and next time when I import the data and that field has changed that means the, there is a new customer entry in that case it will process only that record so that's how you'll be using incremental load if you choose to uh, and you can specify uh, one field or you can specify optional field uh, if uh, the value for the primary audit field is null in that case it, this field will be used and then what it does that it actually it keeps uh, this information inside a file on the disk and this is where you specify where the file is and you can reset the file if you need to say if you have transferred once and uh, if you next time you run it it is going to use this file and process only the changed records uh, however if you want to process the entire set in that case you will reset the file and it will treat the transfer as a new transfer altogether by default I'm going to leave it as full load and uh, move on to the next step and it shows me the layout of the source it shows me the column names data types and db types and the length decimal places if it allows null or not if it is system generated or not and so on and so forth so it, it tells me the entire layout of the source i move to the next step and this is where i can specify any additional sql where clause uh, or order by clause uh, that I want to append for reading the data from this table. Say for example, I can say that uh, where customer dot country equals Germany. That means it is going to read the data only from country of Germany. So you can do that. However, there are filters uh, inside transformation that you can use outside the source. But if you use this uh, additional SQL where clause, what happens that from the source itself the data is filtered so that when the data comes into the application it is already filtered 
it is not being filtered inside the application. That is the difference between using the filter outside or using the additional SQL where clause inside uh, the source. You go to the next step and this is the last step where you can specify comments about this box. Click on OK and your source is ready. If you expand the Chevron, you can see all the fields from the source. You can preview the data and uh, it shows you the real data from this table. If you right click on this box, you can see options such as you can view the table data directly, you can view the table schema. If you click on this, what it does that it runs the query and shows you the data from the table itself. If you view the table schema, it shows you the table schema, how the schema is for this table inside the database. So this is the standard way to create a source that is of database table type in Sites Enterprise. However, there is a shortcut in Sites Enterprise to create the database table source. And for that, if you go to database browser and you select one of your databases, go to the tables, you can drag and drop any of these from uh, the tree onto the designer. And what does that, you can see here I dragged and dropped account table and become a source and it has pre-filled everything. If you go to the properties, it knows already where my database is. It knows which table I'm talking about. It has my layout. So it has done pretty much everything for me by just drag and drop. This is a very good way to create the database table source when you're using the database browser. Thanks for watching this video.